eating bland white people food is becoming a viral social media trend in China right now. And now the global internet and especially Americans are weighing in on it. Yeah, we never thought when we are joking or liking Bai Ren Fan on Chinese internet, they will come all the way back around to the American internet and go viral again. It's going viral twice. <laughs> How dare you say our food is bland? I got some words for you. I'll never forget. A life without spice was so hard, so hard, that it made white people sail around the world to find it. Uh, long story short, Andrew, this actually fits into a larger t context of like Tangping and Bai Lam, which is like a laziness movement amongst Chinese millennials and Gen Z. But let's be honest, when the Americans fired back from people saying white people food was bland, they didn't understand any of that context. It just sort of turned into an America versus China thing, right? Even though some white people in America also agreed with the Chinese students saying that American food is kind of simple or kind of bland, right? Yeah, we're going to get into the comments section. We'll give you our takeaways from Silly to Serious. This is a little bit more on the silly side. So please hit that like button. Um, one thing I do want to say is that, yeah, the main point was that because a lot of Chinese students in China were seeing their friends who were studying overseas. Or they were going to study abroad and coming back, right? Right, and they saw that the meals that they ate at the school lunches were a lot more simple, colder meats, uh, less preparation, easier to make. And they were like, yeah, well, uh, if the Americans are so good at being lazy and it makes them clever, then maybe if I'm lazy and I just eat American snacks, maybe I will be more clever. Right, so the actually reason. there was some admiration for the laziness of the American meals, right? Some of it, some of it. But yeah, the other side of it was like, oh my gosh, like I can't eat this food. It is no flavor. Yeah, I am always dead, but then when I eat something, then I feel like I am alive or something. I don't know. I, I, somebody said the lunch of suffering, too. There was a bunch of comments. Oh, man. I think for people to even wrap their head around this accurately and not just turn into like a name you know, a finger pointing name calling thing, Andrew, you have to understand that the Chinese lunches are heavily prepared, right? There's a lot of cooking involved in a typical lunch that like even a middle school or high school college kid gets at the cafeteria, right? Yeah, I mean, It is cafeteria style. Obviously look at this food right here. Mm. I would say that this is a pretty high level high school, but it could be a high school in China. Uh, it essentially looks like a Chinese cafeteria type food. Even the Chinese military sometimes eats like very colorful food. This looks like a budget motel a buffet in the morning at right, in, in a Asia. second tier city, maybe, you know, yeah. Kang Kang food court. Shout out to Kang Kang. I'll pop up that Yelp. Um, this is what Korea eats for lunch. This is what Japan eats for lunch. And this is what Vietnam eats for lunch. Interestingly enough, Andrew, they get a slice of dragon fruit. So I think we've established, Andrew, obviously the lunches in Asia that you would even get at public school look quite different, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what's sparking these comments. But of course, Andrew, the American internet, they read that title saying, bland white people food getting trashed on and ch viral Chinese internet trend. They got to fire back. Let's get in the comment section. Someone saying, those are strong words from a people with a reputation of eating dogs. <laughs> well, as it turns out, it's safer than eating bats. At least I know my pets are safe and not being served to me. We don't eat dogs, cats, rats, bats, dogs, frogs, weird fungus grown on logs, pets, or anything else from the vet. All right, come on, man. Chinese people don't eat that for lunch. They eat that stuff for dinner. I'm just kidding. Uh, Yeah, but... I, I, that reaction is fair, whatever, I guess. <laughs> yeah, even though I don't actually think that was like the main purpose of that article, that's sort of how it gets presented. And, and you know, everything now is a clickbait thing. Somebody said, have they never seen other types of European food, Italian, Greek, Spanish, for example? Those cuisines are quite delicious and considered white people food. But to that, somebody replied, yeah, when white people, when Chinese are saying white people food, they're usually talking about Anglo-Saxon, maybe German, maybe Swedish food. They are not thinking about Italian food. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what the Italians are eating for lunch, but I know that a lot of Chinese students have friends or have studied overseas in like, you know, Britain, America, things like that, where you're getting the school lunch that is probably fairly bland. Yeah, you know what's really interesting, Andrew? I heard a couple theories that the food from Britain... Uh, is especially bland because of wartime rationing and then people's taste buds just froze in that period. Mm. So that is what is the cause of like 
a lot of people's image because when you freeze frame an era that was particularly designed for wartime, that means nobody's eating anything delicious. But then for some reason, you know how humans are, they become accustomed to a certain brand right. style over time. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, some comment from China was like, yeah, this is a lunch of suffering because it lacks flavor and took away the joy of eating. And uh, I thought when they said the, the it ruined the joy of eating, that's really interesting because I think there's two different schools of thought. The one, you sh there's a joy of eating always in every meal or, or food is just fuel. Right. And I think from a Western standpoint, especially American, like a, especially American, especially American go getter. Like I got things to do. I'm a journeyman. I'm going to go work hard. I need a farmer's breakfast. It's not only about being delicious because basically I think nobody can dispute that something like a sandwich with cold cuts is more convenient, right? You can put veggies, meat, and bread in it. You can make it in 30 seconds. Right. And you, you cannot can make a stir fry anything in less than even like yeah. 10 minutes. I mean, listen, if you're the army and on a mission, are you going to big travel with big packs of like kanji on your back? That's super Do you heavy. think it's also because in the Chinese life, the most dopamine releasing moment of the day at school is going to be lunchtime because the studying is going to be yeah. so hard. Whereas in America, you might just have a ham sandwich for lunch because you might go do some dopamine releasing adult things later like yeah. even if you're 14 yeah yeah that's yeah. not happening if you chinese i guarantee it no maybe listen i want hey i'm on the american side a little bit on this point right here where i'm saying like if you just need food to feel up and go do other things you don't need to wait around for the stir fry and get your chopsticks out and start eating noodles and all these different types of veggies and actually some of the a portion of the chinese netizens were sort of actually starting to kind of have their thought process go in that direction as well, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Somebody said, man, I hate how articles pit one group of people against each other in 2023. Why is everything that's designed to get clicks on Yahoo putting two racial groups or two cultural groups against each other? Yeah, why is a social media trend in China that is harmless actually trying to divide people in America? That makes no sense to me. Somebody said, well, I'm a so-called middle America white woman and I'm proud of eating mashed potatoes, gravy, mac and cheese, cornbread, chili, cheeseburgers, tater tots, Frito pies, and chicken tenders. I'm proud of it. Hey, first of all, all those foods are good, but they're not healthy. And I'm gonna rock with you guys on this one that I think American food is in a way underrated because there's actually a lot of great American food. But what happens is a lot of people eat the mediocre version of no, American No, a food. lot of Americans don't even eat the good American food. Yeah. Food from New Orleans, the Cajun food, jambalaya, I mean, gumbo, amazing. Dude, even, but a lot of Americans don't eat it. Bro, pizza, Chicago hot dogs, like Tex-Mex, lasagna, like, you know, the Americanized one. I like it. Um, somebody said, man, I don't mind German or Italian or French food. This is really more sad British or American food. Andrew, there is a funny joke from Trevor Noah we're about to play right now about British food. You hate immigrants, no immigrant food. And when I say no immigrant food, I mean no immigrant food, nothing. No Mexican food, no Caribbean food, no Dominican food, no Asian food, nothing. Only potatoes. <laughs> These people sailed at a time when they believed if you went that way, you would fall off the edge of the earth and die. And still, some man out there was eating some white lady's cooking, and he was like, I can't do this shit anymore. I'm sailing that way. But what if you die? At least it's exciting. When I think of white people food, I actually think of things like Salisbury steak or meatloaf or mashed potatoes and rice, not a, and or just a super plain assortment of vegetables and sauceless meats. Mm, I'm not gonna lie, British food, not good <laughs> overall guys i'm just, like come on the sunday roast dinners no, they no love there's decent. some dishes when done well i think every culture when they have a top chef or when it's done with love is good but i don't know maybe it's hard to find good british food That's oh, every I'm. culture got delicious things but certainly some food cultures have a higher probability or ratio of delicious things mm -hmm. that's a fact um when i think of white food andrew i'm always in new york i'm thinking of a place called westville which is like almost old town american frozen foods but still okay mm. but on the higher end i'm thinking of new american food which is almost like this new fusion style of american food at a hearth and that's pretty good but yeah. it's very expensive as well david this comment supported um western food over asian 
frozen food. Someone said, yeah, no, eating rice every day, which is super processed, is not good for you. Rice has no nutrients, and I only eat kanji when I'm sick now. Eating rice only in 2023 is actually bad for your digest, so Asians got to change it anyways. Yeah, I would say this. I don't think eating delicious Kang Kang food court style lunches is super unhealthy, but I definitely do not think it is that healthy compared to eating like sweet greens. Yeah, it's not necessary either to just get up and go. Yeah. Well, again, if you think about food as fuel or do you look at it as enjoyment? I do not think Chinese bodybuilders are eating, you know, just fan xie chao dan and like tu dou si and like all the things, or if they do cook it, they're cooking it way healthier, to be honest, yeah. right? Let's be honest. Andrew, I don't know, like everybody's exposed to a different style of Western food because obviously it's not like those Chinese kids for Byron Fong were just showing like donuts and like little Debbie snacks either, right? Right, right, right. Somebody says, man, ultimately it depends on who's cooking it. Yeah, this show. Yeah, the recipes are the recipes and the spices are the spices, but who's cooking it matters a lot too, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody said, let's not start critiquing white people's lunches the way we got critiqued. And somebody said, well, we deserve a little bit of payback. Mm. This is a little bit of a, what? Andrew, your favorite song. The race wars of America. <laughs> but of course, it's just on the internet. I think they manifest themselves in IRL way less, more yeah, seldomly. Yeah, I'm not going to go up to a white person and tell them their lunch is whack, though. I think it's just going to be an internet thing where you point out like, okay, yeah, a bologna sandwich with cheese is kind of whack. I still ate that. And for me personally, I still eat PB&J sandwiches to this day. Oh, PB&J is delicious. I will laugh though, kind of in my mind, uh, if one of my like white neighbors, Andrew, was like, hey man, have you tried this real premium buffalo wing mac and cheese? <laughs> First of all, I think it tastes good, but it is, that's a stereotypical thing for no, them to order. Listen, just like if I ordered superasiannoodles.com. I don't know. They might laugh. Who knows? I, I, are you, are you, like, listen, I still buy Lunchables to this day because I like the way they taste, but I'm also not going to tell other people that Lunchables are the best lunch that I could possibly right. There's eat. something enjoying, perhaps uh, nostalgically titillating about the Lunchables, but it's not good food. Somebody said, but God forbid anybody make fun of Asian food. The hypocrisy is thick here. So this is kind of uh, referring, I guess, back to the race wars. Yeah, well... Yeah, again, just don't go up to any white person and make fun of their food to their face. I think that's yeah, pretty Yeah, obviously, fair. when they have, were trending by Ren Fan in, in China, they were not intending to have this article come back and, like, have white people feel pressed or attacked. And, you know, there's this whole narrative of China versus America, America versus China, and then it just turns into more pew, 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 Yeah, pew. if you pull out some mac and cheese at lunch and then you happen to go to school around all other Asian people and then all the Asian kids go, well, what is that yellow, <laughs> hey, greasy, greasy thing? Hey, come on, come on, come on. Somebody said, um, first off, man, it just really matters what slice of America you grow up around, right? Andrew, a lot of people, you grow up around this distribution, you grow up with that distribution. China and America are gigantic countries. Two people could go there, and it depends on their stats and where, what city they're in and what socioeconomic their class they're in, and have completely different experiences in terms of all American going over to China or a Chinese person coming to America. Their experiences could be variable, right? Yeah, definitely. And I do want to say, guys, if you are Asian and you want to go around running around talking about how Asian cuisine is superior to other cuisines, you just have to know what you're doing and you are inviting some other heat because some people are going to feel attacked and then they'll want to bring up something else that their culture is superior than your culture at. No, so because a lot of cultures, they specialize in certain, certain things, right? Like everybody got... Something better than somebody else, right? Yeah. In, in a group sense. Exactly, guys. Asians have good food. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, don't get us talking about the Pino stars or something. <laughs> all right, everybody. You let us know in the comments down below. Like, um, uh, is, is white food actually bland? And what is white food? I personally still like a lot of American food, but I could see why some people right think is it's is is uh, white people food literally just things from the British Isles, Ireland, Scotland, Britain, and, Wales. And I eat some meals that are meant to be enjoyed, and then I also eat some meals that are just meant for fuel too. So maybe that changes throughout your day as well. Hey, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Like we said, I do not think this topic is very serious, but sometimes the comment sections, you know, they go the way they go. Until next time, we the hot pot boys. We out. Peace. Peace.